welcome to the God is a Geek podcast. My name's Adam Cook. It's episode 401, 401, less impressive than 400 last week, but I am not here alone. I am joined by Christopher Hyde. Hello. How are you, mate? I'm good, yeah. How are you? Do you like the fact I gave you the sort of primo book in there, you know, the first name there? Uh, Normally I go somewhere else, but it was to you this time. Honestly, I thought I'd be last. I'm quite, I'm quite impressed. I've got a little promotion that's, now. That's the kind of podcast this is. You don't know <laughs> what to expect. Who will I go to next? Will it be him or him? It'll be Christopher White. How are you, mate? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, good. Yeah, good, good to be back. Glad, yeah, glad to. Of course, you weren't here last week. You got a lot to no, catch up on, mate. I, miss, I missed up. I missed out even. That's fine. I'm here. Here. I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I'm good, and, thanks. And also, we have a fourth member this week by popular demand. I'm going to call him. Like he's like a Christmas present, so I'm going to call him Nicholas Fraser. How are you doing, Mick? All right? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you all? All right. Yeah, I mean, drink, drinking a nice glass of piss there by the looks of it. It's, um, uh, look, this, it does look a bit. No, in fact, really if your piss is that color, then something's piss. seriously wrong. Yeah. Um, it's Lucas A. It's <laughs> yeah. not piss, guys. What? What is? Look, I mean, this only works on the video podcast, but that's two weeks on the run. And like, is this some sort of I must have an exotic flavored drink or? Is Lucas A. Exotic? You need to get out more. At least for a podcast, mate. I, like, I'm just Adam, Adam, water, I've just Adam, I've got something. I've got something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go on. Chris, Chris White's going to show us his drink. Oh Jesus my. Christ! Now that's, that's exotic. Worth the, that's worth that's, the video version alone. It's like Bubble gum flavored. It? That's it. Tastes like Diasa. No, it's it's. I love it. Do you, is that like? A, does that taste like? Have you ever had a Blue Wicked? No. Yeah, I have, but no, it doesn't. Okay. It tastes exactly what it says. It tastes exactly like bubble gum. Like you've literally got, like as the Geordie would, <laughs> Geordies would say, like uh, you know, I'm not going to do the accent. Oh God, mix here. I should you've have got even to do the accent. mentioned <laughs> accents. I'm not going to do accents. Uh, but a, a pint of blue drink is what I was going to say. Um, for any fans of Atletico <laughs> Mints out there, which is a ter- terrific football non football podcast. Um, that's a serious beverage, Chris. It is, mate. It's a beaut. Like, that's someone who's who's who's, who's turned up. He's glad he's here this week and is just not fucking about. That's I ain't fucking about. I'm here for the duration, mate. The long haul. I'm ready to go. Deadly serious. <laughs> um, we should get started on the biggest game in the world right now, probably. I, I had a chat about it last week. And this week we can... I mean, it's out. The game is out. Um, I gave it 10 out of 10. I know Chris agreed. Chris spent even more time, I think, with it than me because he did like a complete guide to it. But it would be nice to... Because I know, Chris Hyde, you're playing through... Well, at the time this goes live, you've probably started The Last of Us 2, and so is Mick. But at the time, I know you are playing through, right now, as of this moment, The Last of Us Remastered, right? Yes, that's correct, yeah. Right now. So we're just, uh, Chris and I thought we'd just do the spoiler cast, like, right here, just in front of you two, <laughs> and just spoil the whole game. Yeah. Um, we, can, we can talk about the game more now, but I the think this is the weird thing, right? And I don't know, if Chris, if you'll agree with me, but there's been a lot of talk about the embargo of this game and how you can't talk about this. But as a site, we tend to... It's sort of, it is site policy that you don't spoil the story. Absolutely, so I, I'm I'm not sure that anything we're going to say this week is going to actually. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't. Yeah, know that no. I would say I, this week. I, I couldn't I, last um, week. I can't believe within an hour of waking up this morning <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see things trending. Uh, oh really? Yeah. And, and and granted, it it's not like end game stuff. Even though I've seen casual tweets about that today, what happens wow. towards the end or whatever. But wow. it, it's relatively within the first few hours, stuff that happens that's trending. People are openly talking about it on Twitter. Uh, I, I've I, I'm sick of the user. Sc- well, I know I know I shouldn't get help about it, but it's the same with these kind of games. The user score on Metacritic, you, like user score is 35 at the minute. How has anyone finished it? They're clearly they they're clearly just being arseholes. I was going to use the annoying oh, word. Dan. I thought you were going to breach. The, I was. I was going to drop the C bomb because <laughs> even I don't use that until late in the podcast. No, I, I, so I you. just, I just find it disgusting. Like as a game, as a game, it is fantastic. Mm. Like the, the, obviously, we're not talking about the story. The game itself, like to play it, it feels so good. It feels so different to the first one. Yeah, it retains that core element of what made it special. The um, like the 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 stuff to the like the 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 artifacts and the the cards and all this, there's so many little like nudges to Naughty Dog's legacy and also the the creators and there's all that kind of stuff to enjoy, but the level designs are fantastic. Like the there's, it is like um, 
like Uncharted Lost Legacy and, and yeah. Uncharted 4 in a way, where it was like a, a lot bigger, but it was still linear, but you, you could kind of, you can kind of go wherever you want, especially like the, the second chapter where you're Ellie in Seattle, like the big, you know, when you're out of, of your little, out of Jackson. Uh, and, and like one of the levels in that takes a long time to finish, but you can explore everything and there's so much to do. And just, just in general, like this game deserves the praise it's getting. I think anyone that thinks it's, it's a shit game needs to have a word with themselves because it, it, even if you don't agree with the story or you don't agree with what happens, yeah. you cannot deny that this is beautiful. It looks incredible. The sound design is incredible. The acting is incredible. The gameplay is best best single player game I've played in a long time bar you know God of War it's God just War. Yeah. it's fantastic mate and I, and I think it's getting far too much negativity and people aren't getting it they just they just want to jump I, on the bandwagon and, I and even be... saw today like I even saw people sort of complaining about that so they released um, well they're putting out like a, a limited edition acoustic guitar based on the one that you, you the, the, the prominent one in the game mm. and um I even saw people because it's like two point, it's two and a half, two thousand three hundred US dollars, and I saw people sort of even going on about, wow, that's just so expensive. But like Taylor guitars are and Martin guitars yeah. kind of are, and I even I saw a suggestion of well, why didn't they make that guitar but like the cheaper, the cheaper one because like, Taylor do some acoustic guitars that are cheap, but it's like, but whenever companies do limited edition shit and it's cheap, you moan about the build quality. Like so, this is a Taylor yeah. guitar a beautiful Taylor guitar Mm. and they are like I don't know maybe if it's people who don't understand or don't know and that's fair play but don't spout if you're not informed like guitars good guitars are expensive they are Mm. um like you know there's a guitar I'm eyeing up that's like 850 quid I can't afford that but that is not a high-end guitar like the one I would dream of like the Gretsch White Falcon or the Penguin we're talking five grand these are beautiful instruments like a piano is not 50 quid you know i don't know it yeah. just i've never seen a game that is brought out so much hatred in a community that i really feel should be about love like the thing about games that makes me so happy is that they can do anything be anything it, like i said last week you're limited by the imagination of the people creating them i've never seen anything i've never had to moderate comments on our youtube so much i've oh. like people were moaning about oh you're deleting negative comments no no i was de- deleting comments that were outright spoiling the game for people who hadn't played it yet and being outright abusive and, and i'm real sorry if you don't like that but our house our rules and you don't get to call me a word that i don't want seen on our channel you don't get to yeah um mm-hmm. i'm sorry if you don't like that there are other choices um i'm all for constructive criticism like i've had people call us out for spoiling a thing in the past uh, I'll, ne- I'll never forget the game it was a game called crossing souls really enjoyed that game and someone said you've act- you've spoiled it you've said you've not spoiled it and i looked at the footage it's like yep I've-, I've shown a bit of footage there that it's not like this is a spoiler at the end of the game there's just a bit on the screen that made me go actually yeah that is a spoiler i fucked up hands up but you don't get to come and be abusive and you don't get to come and spoil the game when we're very clearly putting no spoilers in our video review. Um, Absolutely. It, but I, but I removed a comment, that. actually. I removed huh? a comment. I, I said I, yeah. I removed a comment earlier today. Some guy just came straight on. I think like, mm. I think it was yeah. that's right. And he just them. literally just put the whole... The plot. This is what yeah. happens. Yeah. Don't buy this game. And I just thought, you know what, mate? No, like to, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I should say it's not just me been doing it. Like me and Mick no. both sort of run that. I mean, channel. Don't, you know what I mean, Lee. I don't mind the the ones where they're making themselves look like fucking idiots. Leave that. No, out. leave it. The let, world let, can see look, that. Yeah, but thanks. someone who's no come on and deliberately that. just spoiled it for everybody just to be a bastard, now, nah, mate. I mean, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to explain, I'm not going to say who it is or what the comment is, but I left it there today. Mick, there was one as of recording today that is a one word comment, so you can look this up if you want for that review, and it's spelt wrong. And yeah, I, I saw that, that. <laughs> and, and 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 I was like, Do you know what? I'm leaving that because yeah. <laughs> you know what you've given that. me a, one word and you've still, you know, and it makes you wonder about the people who are making those comments. But it also reinforces exactly who is making those comments. And yeah, yeah. but the game, the actual game, yeah, fuck um, the game, yeah. the game's fantastic. I did but, chuckle this morning. I shouldn't because yeah. I shouldn't fuel the fire. But I did chuckle this morning when I saw that on Twitter hashtag Jolin1 was trending. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> which it did make me laugh. But even even that, right? And and Chris Hyde is sat there not having a clue what we're talking about, and so are people who probably haven't played the game. But even that spoiler, that repeated spoiler that I've seen, Chris, I shut my eyes at night and I can see it scrolling. That <laughs> it's like, God damn it! If you're gonna do that, if you're gonna be that douche, am I the only one who thinks just be a bit original about it? Yeah, yeah. You know, just power just it try and be clever, else. maybe. Yeah. You know, just just try and just try and maybe be. I don't know. Here's one. Here's an idea for you. Try and be funny. Like <laughs> you're probably gonna if if it makes us laugh, like that one word comment, which I'm gonna just assume is intentionally badly spelt because it has to be. It has to be. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna just say. You, I don't know. Look, the game's fantastic. Like Chris and I, like you know, Chris has been through it multiple times. I have now. It is. It's it the one thing it's not, and I noticed this because I started another playthrough on like on New Game Plus. Actually, the one thing I noticed, and Chris can back me up here, Chris White, is it's not going to be a game that's going to be speed run very easily, which makes the kind of reviews appearing two hours after it was released all the funnier, because it's a story heavy game as as their games often are, mm-hmm. and because I'd played it twice, I was like, I'm just going to skip the cutscenes. <laughs> You'll get a cutscene, skip it, and you're like, oh, loading screen. And then you get oh I'm there's another cut because they split it's obviously the scenes there's, yeah there's quite a lot like that <laughs> you can you can be looking at loading screen quite a while the speedrunners are gonna struggle to speedrun unless they I don't know somehow get it running on a PC with, you know emulated it's, it's not gonna happen but it's, it's yes it's just in, just enjoy it just don't be a dick just just enjoy it for what it is I don't know, I honestly don't know why it's hated so much uh, if there's constructive criticism in a week or so about the story then. Yeah, I'll, I'll listen to it, but at the minute, there's no way anyone could have played through it and know no. exactly what happens, regardless of what what was leaked or whatever. I still don't know what was actually leaked, but but even still, like I once you play this game, see it for how it is, play it as it's supposed to be played, you know, and then come back to me and complain about it. But at the minute, just fuck off, enjoy it. It's fantastic <laughs> visually, everything, man, and that soundtrack yeah. throughout. Uh, I- out of interest, do you? Because in the review, uh, oh. I said it. I was like, I think it's better soundtrack than the first. Where do you sit on that? I I like the I like I love it. I think the actual soundtrack is in the score by Gustav yeah. Santolola yeah. is. Don't better get that than wrong. First. The comments will be there again. I've had the couple yeah, of them as well because I cocked yeah. that up in the preview. Sorry, <laughs> hand up. I pronounced it wrong. Yeah, fuck you. Um, no, no, no. To be fair, they were. It wasn't mean. It was just I, I cooked it up. It's all right. I, I'm, yeah. I'm nearly forty. I definitely can say I made a mistake in that. I pronounced it wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh well. I mean, if I no one's noticed, you pronounce it. How do you, what's the credit? I don't know. Um, oh, okay. what, I wonder if anyone's noticed in their reviews yet, because whenever someone specifically mentions a name and it's it's spelt in a way that's difficult to pronounce, I've just started not doing that bit and just. Finding a way around it, or is there? I have noticed. Yeah, yeah, you, have to, you keep <laughs> fucking doing it like a lot, mixing, <laughs> up, naming people, and I'm just like, I'm not saying, I'm not. He's trying to do it. He's, he's doing me. You know, he's trolling me here. Um, <laughs> but no, it's it, yeah, it's a fantastic game. Um, it's it's weird because I wanted to talk to you, Chris White, mostly about this because obviously I know that you and I, I think everyone here loves that first game, but you 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 would mm. play it yearly. And yeah. I, I I noticed, and I wonder if you noticed this, because it's easy to reflect on you. It's harder to reflect on yourself that other people notice. I noticed that your feelings about these games, while I I knew that they were both ten out of tens for you, I feel like they elicit quite different reactions. Like whereas the first, I know you look back on, and it's like the connection. Like we talked about last week, Mick. Like the connection to the, the story. And in fact, Chris Hyde, we were talking, weren't we, about how when you first played this game, you didn't have kids. And you're re- replaying this now with a daughter, yeah. And yeah, yeah. It... I mean, I I winced a bit when you said just then, like everyone loved the first one. I'm I'm gonna hold my hands up here and say I thought it was all right the first time I played okay. it. Okay. Um, I thought it was good, just not the you know, the best game ever that everyone else was saying. Um, mm. but I was like, I've got to on the hype train for the, the second one. Listening to you guys talk about it, previews, everything else. I was like, I've got to give this a second go. And all my days playing through it now. One, just giving, I think, the story more of a chance than I did before. I think I got hung up on the, not average, but, you know, just decent gameplay more than the story. Gave it more more time than I probably should have done versus the story. And, yeah, with a daughter now, playing <laughs> playing it through now, that, that opening scene, you said it last week, Mick. On my days, it just, it sucker punched me last week when I played it. Yeah, you know, yeah. just, just literally putting myself in that position. Um, 
you know, being being a dad, I was. <laughs> Whereas ten years or however long ago it was, eight years ago when I played it, um, just almost washed over me the soulless man that I was back then. But but now, oh yeah, I've, I've got a lot more time for the story. I'm only about halfway through. I've just just got to um, the full section, so I'm just in the second season part, which I think is about halfway through right. from memory. Um, so I know it. I, I know from memory it ramps up again in the second half as well, the, the story wise. But yeah, um, this, I'm I'm glad I've replayed it. Let's put it that way because I think it's gone from being one of those games that I liked but wasn't waxing lyrical like everyone else to a game that I'm I'm really appreciating a second time round. So I'm so glad I've done it to prepare myself for the onslaught of The Last of Us Two when <laughs> when I get to play that. I mean, something that I found interesting is I was, he's not here this week, obviously, Adam Carroll, but he was talking to me about, because he's obviously was fin- playing through the original again, um, and I think he mentioned it. He, he sent me a text and he was saying, he's, you know, I'm so ready for this now. And and he mentioned something, and I, 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 I wonder how truly divisive the original was in terms of the gameplay, because something he said was the complete opposite to how I felt. And he said that, for example, while he enjoys the infected stuff, he felt like the game was like, oh no, I'm, I love the combat with the with the human enemies, and I've always found, and the same, Chris. I don't know yeah. why, if you feel this for the second, I still feel like the actual best stuff is the infected stuff. Not that I don't enjoy the human enemies, but I, I and it just it never occurred to me. I, I sort of assumed everyone felt that way. That like, no, the best stuff is is when you fight the infected, and there's the clickers and the runners and and the new enemies in the the sequel that I'm not going to name. Um, but I was curious, like, did everyone else feel that way, or, or was I the one that was the outlier? I think um, definitely. I, I never thought about it really on the last game, but right. with this, with this one, the there's a lot of both, isn't there? Really, and the, the yeah. best moments were when you're going through. Um, trying really to be really careful. You just go through a building, yeah. and all of a sudden, out of nowhere where you're not expecting it, the infected will pop up. Whereas when it's against like the, the soldiers or the the humans who are having been infected in the game, it's all very staged, so you know it's happening. But the infected are always a surprise, and that's what kind of tests your ability to move around efficiently and flick between your guns. Mm. You don't have as much preparation as you would do if you find the guards. So, yeah, I didn't, never really thought about it, but because there's so much kind of... I mean, it's a lot longer than the first game. Um, so oh, you yeah. have more opportunities. Yeah, well, it's it's over people. double. Isn't yeah, it? I would say the infected are probably the best. Yeah. Um, Chris, Hi- Chris Hyde. Uh, so as someone who's playing it now, where would uh, yeah, you sit I mean, on that? Like my, um, I think my again, I think I flipped a little bit. Um, at the time when I first played it, I think I just, I know it's not a zombie game, but I'd kind of, you know, that whole, I kind of got a bit kind of, not bored of zombies, but it wasn't new and different. So I feel like I was, I was reacting perhaps less to the, the, the infected than the uh, than uh, the, the human enemies. Um, but playing it through now, I think it's just very, they're very different. Like you say, it's, you know, obviously infected is kind of up close and reactive, whereas, you know, the other, the, against human enemies, it's more sort of, it could be more like long range fighting. And it can be stealth for both, but it's, you know, mm. it's, it's, it's kind of short and long distance, isn't it? And, and, and that I feel the, intensity and the atmosphere is much higher obviously with with the infected which i think now that i'm embracing the story more which i should have done the first time or if i did i forgot but i think it's it certainly i think this time round, i am preferring it in the way you're describing which is i prefer the the atmosphere of like you say the clickers and the, and the runners and everything else what that brings and i've kind of braced myself more for those fights when they happen and those encounters than i do just with kind of hunters out in the open that's just that's wanna... just a part of the story to get through almost rather than yeah. you know the intensity of the the clickers and stuff so i want to throw this out there and see how this sits um clickers okay i think they're one of the scariest enemies in a video game they the, if you play these games with headphones on when they scream mm. it's terrifying is it just me? No. I, really I found. Gonna... I thought. I didn't think that. I haven't played. I haven't started the second one yet. But in the first game, I didn't find them to be. But the first time you come across them, I did. The first because I, I mean, as you know, I don't particularly like horror games. I'm, no. I'm a bit of a. I'm a bit of a wet lettuce when it comes to sort of horror and stuff like that. But I, I remember 
I, I, was, I always preferred, I, I never thought The Last of Us needed the infected stuff. Like it always, really? I always liked, yeah, because it was all, it always put me in mind of like Cormac McCarthy, is it Cormac McCarthy, The Road? Have you yeah. ever read The Road? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's sort of with the way Joel's relationship was with Ellie and like the world they're in was already dangerous enough. But then when you got the infected in there, I didn't, I'm not saying it didn't need it, but it, it at the time when I was playing, I, I kept thinking, oh, I forgot there were, you know, zombies in this. But then I thought the clickers, I think there was a, there's a point about halfway through the game, I think, where you just start, if I remember, cause it's been a long time since I played the first one, so forgive me if I'm completely wrong, but I'm sure there's a point about halfway through the game where it just became easier to use like Joel's, mystical see-through walls ability and just shank the fucking things before they get a chance to see and that's what i started doing in the in the first game so it to begin with i remember like you said the scream and and the noise when you hear that noise and you're like shit there's one here somewhere that was really good but by about halfway through it was like you hear the noise and just be like right where are you and then i find them and i just stick them all in the back of the head and then you know carry on so 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 that that actually Oh Christ! I'm, that, I think I nearly spoiled something, Chris White. I, I was going to say that actually, that there's, uh, oh, this is going to sound awful, but there's there's elements of this game that do ch- sort of change the sort of shanking them. I don't yes. know what I'm going to shout out. There's no there's no point because no, I can't. I, say I, what... I hope there is. I hope the clickers. There is. I hope, but then that's kind of a gamey thing, and I know that's. Yeah, it's it is, weird yeah. because people will now that the last of us 2 is out people will play it their heads yeah. will level a lot yeah. of people the people who don't want to play it the people who are trolling already i don't give a shit about them they're not going to change their mind even if they yeah. secretly think it's the best game ever made they have made up their mind and even if they love yeah. it they will never admit it end of but there's a there is a percentage of of people who have been vocal against it who will yeah. still play it right and yeah. I, I think it's probably going to be a, a good percentage and those yeah. people will play it and their minds will be changed or they won't. But they there will be now, going forward, there will be proper discourse, I think, about yeah. this game where people can actually say, well, I've played it now and I think this. And if you look back, if you look at The Last of Us, the first one now, you can see, like, you know, people have been, particularly the last few months, the build-up to The Last of Us 2, people, YouTubers and things like that have been replaying the first one and giving you their thoughts and they're like, Chris is playing through it. The way people talk about The Last of Us now, I feel that people are looking at it deliberately in a more critical way. Like, I remember playing the first one, even when it came out, and I didn't really care about the fact that there was a a kind of a bottomless inventory in it, which, for a game that's quite real and was was quite uh, focused on, on realism in some aspects... And then you've also got like an inventory where you can stash God knows what in your backpack and, you know, you can hide sawn off shotguns or whatever. That sort of thing that people, when people are discussing Last of Us now, they're talking about that stuff. That never yeah. bothered me. I don't really care about that no. because it's it, at the end of the day, it's a game and that's what it's always going to be about. But it's weird to see the people, a lot of the stuff I'm seeing about The Last of Us, a lot of the critical side of Last of Us, but, oh, you know, there's a lot of things where you've got to move a dumpster to get over a wall. Well, so what? That, you know, you give see, us... again, again, though, they did take a lot. So do you, do you, I'd forgotten, genuinely, the things people took the piss out of the first time was ladders and... Um, crates. Crates, like the broken yeah, down yeah. crate things, the pallets. Uh, it only occurred to me, again, don't want to spoil it, but there is a moment in this game where it's like, oh, yeah, and they were all, they're almost going... <laughs> we listened like there's two moments like that chris isn't there um involving both one a ladder and one a pallet where you're and the game literally goes are you happy yet it it just this game's come out and it feels like it's weirdly like what do you want us to stop hating us please what more can we do it'll be like the cold play of video games like people will complain about it box quote (laughs) people will complain about it but it'll still sell millions like it's just yeah, people are more yeah. vote. The, the, yeah. There's just we just see a lot of people being vocal, but well, we don't know. That's the thing. We've got a really no, but like I, I go on, I I go on Twitter for my sins. I don't know why sometimes. Yeah, oh, there's but your first mistake. There's um this. I've not. I've seen very few nice things said about it. By people I don't mm. know. By people I know. That's fine, but it will still it will still be the number one game of the week. It will still go on to yeah. be in the game of the year. What game? You know, winning yeah. all sorts. You know, it'll still be. Heralded as a classic, and rightly so. Yeah. 
Um, and it, it has changed a lot to, to improve the gameplay from the first one. And, mm. and, and regarding like the shivs, that it, isn't, it isn't a spoiler when they've already said they're focused, like in the, in the gameplay, like the, the videos that they did before it released with Druckmann and a, and a few of the other people involved in the game were saying that Ellie, the focus on Ellie is that she is small and she is young and she won't be able to do some of the things that Joel used to do. And like, so there's no, there's no secret that, that we've written, we've done the guide. You play as someone called Abby, right? Okay. Yeah. That's, 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 that's as fair. spoilery as you're going to get. I will that, put some uh, warnings in this video. And do you think that's out there though anyway, guys? Too? Yeah. It is, but like they've, it, well, they have used a picture of her in, I've, on their Instagram. They have used a picture of Abby. They haven't, I don't think said what the, it's fucking stupid because at some point <laughs> it's a video game and it's a mechanic like, so you yeah well, Chris I think you were going to go on to say this when you are playing as Abby there are mechanical differences not like yeah. it's not you're not no. playing Tetris but it, it, but it all it's only different in the sense that she is a strong told you, militarized told female and she is obviously of a dis- different stature to Ellie Yes, Ellie. Ellie was brought up differently. She they're completely separate, so they are going to have different abilities that that aren't the same. And I think the the nuances there work very well. And and whenever or when you don't, when whatever, whenever you play as Abby in the story, it comes at the right time, yep. very much like God of War, and it offers up a fresh change, whether you want it to or not. I think it I'm, does it excellently. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to say this won't be the last week we talk about The Last of Us 2. Um, Mick is yet to play it. Chris Hyde is yet to play it. Adam Carroll is probably going to be playing it as you probably the third time through it as you watch this podcast or listen to it. <laughs> but what I will say is that I genuinely have things I want to say about Abby, um, about when you play as her. And I am still at the point where I don't want to put those thoughts out there yet. They're not negative. They're they're totally the opposite. But I just still feel it's a little too soon. The time that people can hear this, the game's been out for four or five days. Um, I, we, we will come back to The Last of Us Part 2. There's no question it's going to be a, a topic of discussion for a great while. And we're going to come back to it at the end of the year because I'm telling you right now that it is in my list already. No question about it. Um, it is. Before we move on to what everyone else has been playing, I just want to quickly throw out some... Uh, I've been playing Burnout Paradise on Switch. Burnout Paradise Remastered. And it's a bit greedy, isn't it? Like, have you seen the price of this game? No. Full price. It's a full... Well, no, because Switch games are what now? 50, well, 60 yeah, quid, 50 aren't they? Quid. But if I, like, if I literally Google Burnout Paradise Remastered, I'm doing this live, Amazon... Um, with, uh, you shouldn't hear the mic. The mic we shouldn't pick up stuff. We'll go to Amazon.co.uk. And what have we got here? PS4 version of Burnout Paradise Remastered. Would anyone like to take a guess at how much? Forty nine ninety nine. No PS4 version. Oh PS4. Twenty nine ninety nine. Fourteen forty nine. Yeah. Xbox One. Fourteen pounds. Yeah. Nintendo Switch. Forty nine ninety nine. Four pounds ninety nine. Yeah. Ridiculous. Oh. The, the Witcher Three is the same. It's the same. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. Right, Switch. Burnout Paradise is one of... Th- I think it's the best racing game ever made. There it is. Not going to um, argue with you there. Yeah. I, th- I think that Forza Horizon 4 is the closest we've ever come to getting another one. I think it... And I've said this in the Switch review. I think you can channel the spirit, and they do. They channel the spirit, and it's... But the heart... The heart of Burnout Paradise is... It wants to soar. It wants to scream. It doesn't, and 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 I don't know. I was talking to you about this today, Mick. Um, I read I, after I wrote my review for the Switch version. I read my review of Remastered on PS4. Mm. I think I played it on, and I actually read my review of it, and I was like, oh, "What a miserable bastard!" Like everything he, that guy, <laughs> that Adam two years ago didn't like, this Adam really liked. And and I've, I don't know. Like, it doesn't have a GPS like Forza. So you don't click on a map. I want to go there, and GPS is like turn left, turn right. It just comes up on the screen up here, like blinking indicators almost for like this is Boulevard or whatever, this is Avenue, and I kind of don't mind it because it feels like the whole game is about freedom. Like yes, you're in a race, but you start here and you end up over here, 
and how you get there, we don't really care. And I spent, like, the first race I played when I started reviewing the Switch version, I started it, and I was ahead, and then I went my own way, and I was in eighth for, I would say, 90% of the race. And then I came out of the shortcuts, and I'm first. And to me, that's that's the spirit and the heart of that game. Um, you know, a race from A to B where the entire idea is you just don't don't die. Get to point B from point A, and don't let them trash you. And I don't know, I just, I wonder... I wonder if what we've got because I, I want I want another one of these, and I wonder if the reason we won't get one because I don't think we will at this point is because it's kind of the skate thing, and we'll get onto this with EA. Um, how do you make a game that is that beloved? How do you do another one of them? How do you you like I say you can channel the spirit and the, and the ideas, but how do you take that because they can't make Burnout Paradise two like this? People will complain. There were people who will play this for the first time and accept the lack of GPS um, because it's an old game. It's over 10 years old. They won't accept it in a new game. And I I, I don't know that I want a, a Burnout Paradise with all the mod cons. Like I, I don't know. I think I'm getting to an age where I like stuff from the past. Not everything. Jesus Christ, not everything. Don't use that quote out of context. There's plenty in the past that can just... I had a conversation the other day with a gentleman who the only word I could use to describe him was a fucking racist and the stuff he said and I'm not easily shocked I was genuinely like I didn't think people like you saying that sort of stuff still existed and yet I know you do now because I'm right here experiencing it um so yeah some stuff stays in, in the past and it should so stay in the past but in terms of games I, you know, but anyway burn up paradise switch 720 on in in your hand 1080p on your on your screen, um, 60 frames, smooth, properly. So I couldn't notice anything going wrong with it. Yeah, it doesn't look quite as good in handheld, but I found it fine. Um, and I don't like playing in handheld, so that says it's very good. Um, but 50 quid nearly. <sighs> 50 quid Stortion. nearly. Best part of it. it's too much, isn't it? You can get it for Steam. I think it's on like five pounds on Steam. Now I know it's like a Nintendo tax. You're paying the premium for having it on a handheld, but that's bullshit. Though. It is. It, is. Yeah. it pains me. It pains me to to to. It it they da- again in the review. I'm using my own words. They dampened the fanfare of what should be a celebration. This game's brilliant. It's on everything, and whatever. Uh, and f- and 51 worldwide games, which I'm going to play more of. Um, I fucking love games like this. I love that. I it, I got it because. My wife plays a lot of Animal Crossing, more than I do now, actually, and I wanted something... You know, that's the gateway, and then I want to bring her across with 51 Worldwide, and we'll see what happens when we get over here at the end. But in the middle, um, she hasn't actually played it yet, but Chris, obviously, you you, you, you know, you reviewed that, and it's just... it's yeah. just You weren't wrong about the voiceover stuff and the little sort of skits. <laughs> Some of yeah. them are super weird. Like, like They're, they're like, very Nintendo, aren't they? Like, yeah, but... but also they're kind of... They're kind of not as well, because, like, arguing angry child... Mm. With mum yeah. and dad or something, and like, I just want to play Ludo. Is that all, <laughs> yeah. is, is that all right? I don't. Know. You, you can skip all of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. How, I do. You, are you enjoying it? Like the games and. Yeah. No. Really good. Played? Like I. Yeah. I haven't been through them all yet. There's one Claire mentioned because we. There was, this is not the first game in the series. It was on 3DS as well. Was it mm. DS? Might have been DS actually. I think it was DS. It was DS. Yeah. Play it regularly, and I can't remember. She's. I'm, I'm struggling now. There was a game on there that she played a lot of. That I don't think is in this version, but at the same time, a lot of the st- Uno's in this, but it's not called Uno, yeah, because they can't use because Uno's a copyright. Mm. Um, what is it called? Like Last Card Standing, something like that. It, it reminded me when you mentioned Uno the other day. I was like, yeah, that's technically yeah. in fifty one. It is. It's definitely Uno. It's definitely not right, but it's it's there. Um, but that's yeah, that's all I've been playing. Has anyone else been playing any games they would like to discuss? I'm just gonna throw it out there. I've been playing. <clears throat> I've been playing West of Dead. Okay, interested already. Want to play this? This has got Ron Perlman in, so just there you go. That's, I don't need to say oh, anymore. It's, it's a Western game Sold. Sold. with Ron Perlman. It's actually really good. I, I was at, yeah, I, 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 yeah. It was really. Has anyone else got? Has anyone been playing this? Or, no, 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 no. It's on the list. Okay, it's, it's Game Pass, um, isn't it? On PC. Uh, I don't know because I. Just, I think it I is. Just, I'll check I'm while you sure. talk. Yeah, but uh, no, it's really good. It's like, uh, 
What did I review a couple of weeks or a couple of months? I don't know. So this year's a blur. This there was a game called Ritual Crown of. Thorns, oh, I thought you were going to name a... another one. Go on, carry on. No, I was going to name yeah, Ritual Crown of Thorns, which was another like a supernatural western thing. There's, I always find supernatural westerns or westerns with that sort of theme, they're all really samey. Like the gameplay can be really different. The you know you can have whoever you want doing the voice acting. You can have whatever mechanics you like in it, but the the atmosphere and the art style are always the same there's always a lot of goat skulls and pentagrams and everything's red and black and the, the, i'd love to see someone do it just a little bit different one day but anyway yeah this west of dead it's kind of like it's a bit dead cellsy i get a strong dead cells mm -hmm. vibe from the way this the game is structured but at the same time it's kind of like a cover based twin stick shooter so what was it's, that it's other one that was released? Like a, I'm sure you reviewed it. Oh, like Angels Devil, and Demons. Devils. Yes, yes. Devils, Devil's Trigger. Devil Trigger. Devil's Trigger. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, it's quite similar to that as well. But it's you're you're a guy who's just like dead. You're a cowboy who's dead, and you've woken up in purgatory because it's a supernatural western, and that's where they go. And and yeah, for some reason your head's on fire, like the Ghost Rider. Oh, for no, no apparent reason other than that it's cool as fuck. And you're Ron, it's Ron Perlman, he does the voice of him. And the whole game is just basically, you're just in this cycle of purgatory. So you, you begin with nothing, and then you fight through rooms of enemies until you die, and then you start again. But it's a bit like Dead Cells in that everybody you kill, you collect sins. And then when you get to like a hub in between stages or missions, you can trade those sins with a witch and then unlock things that will then drop randomly throughout the next run when you die so uh different weapons with different um attributes on them this, this sounds great so far by the way <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah and really things great. like that um and you've got like a two special abilities that you can have and they're everything from like dynamite to uh big bowie knife and things like that that are just like a one-shot thing then on a cooldown you start off in like a bar every time and when you go through the saloon doors it's just dark and it's basically like the, the world is dark all the time and every room that you go into has got cover and lanterns and enemies and <clears throat> you can't see into the darkness you can't aim there's an auto aim but you can't auto aim to enemies that are in the dark whereas they can see you so <clears throat> you've constantly got to stay in cover and basically all you've got to do is you've got to hit a lantern so you can light the room up so you can see them which stuns them and then you've got to take them out. And so you've got like, there's pistols and there's like rifles you have to aim for a little while. Then you've got shotguns and all this stuff. There are zombies and guys with guns and big dogs and wendigos and all sorts of things that the game throws at you. It's all randomly generated as well, which is really cool. Um, <clears throat> but the cover system's great because the, you're quite, the guy's quite nimble anyway, but you'll sort of slide into cover <clears throat> and then you, everything's contextual with the A button because I'm playing on, I'm playing on PC, but I'm using a controller because it, it, it's built for a controller really. Yeah. And it's a shooter, isn't it? Yeah. So, and then you just, and the guys will be shooting at you. And obviously the cover that you're in will crumble after th three or four hits. So you can only stay in one place for so long and then you can like slide across it or slide into the next cover. Or if, the, if their reticle uh, goes red, at the last second and you hit dodge you'll do like a slow motion dodge and that there are certain skills that you can unlock that will allow you to heal when you do dodge at the right time things like that so but it's it's just really cool like it's there's it, it's not perfect but because as you can imagine it's it's kind of isometric so it's not fully top down and the the screen area is quite it's quite confined because you're quite large on the screen you'd expect it to be but you, you the william mason i think his name is quite large on the screen so the camera can be a bit of a pain in the ass, and uh, and the auto aim can be just finickety sometimes. But that's really the only complaints because it's just really good. And then obviously you've got on on top of all this cool western shooting action, you've got like Ron Perlman just, and he just <laughs> sounds like a guy who's just fucking sat in the back of an Uber talking to the driver. I, I mean, there's yeah. there's all this supernatural shit going on. There's Wendigos and witches and. And he's he's been killed and resurrected, and every time he dies, he comes back to this bar and has a But he's just like he just doesn't give a shit. It's just it's <laughs> like so such a laid back narration that it's too, you know it's and if like something weird will happen, he'll just be like, oh well, that's that, and then it just carries <laughs> on again. But it's got it's got a real good vibe. I, I'm really enjoying it. 
Okay. But yeah, um, so there's that, West of Dead. Yeah, fair enough. <clears throat> um, Chris, hi. I mean, you've been off. You've been playing yeah. The Last of Us, haven't you? It's... Last of Us and Astroneer, which we could go down a rabbit hole on, which we probably <laughs> shouldn't. I've so. downloaded that finally. Well, we, we, should, we should mention it, because Chris <laughs> White obviously has been incredibly busy with The Last of Us. Mm. Um, and so we sort of <clears throat> showed him what we'd been doing while he was... We should... We, we I think we're at the point we probably should start streaming this game, maybe. Um because it's it's mm -hmm. a it, I feel like people would watch it and feel like we feel, which is that we are chilling out, chatting friends, um, and they would see the gameplay and, um, I, I, not to hijack it, Chris. Fuck me, that game. I still can't stop thinking about I, it. It's it's really weird, right? Like, like I'm playing The Last of Us at the moment, and obviously I'm really invested in the story, and you know that 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 scene i mentioned earlier about um, at the start of it you know really got to me and re really felt it and then what do i dream of i dream of astroneer and like resources and stuff and discovery and all that sort of stuff because there's just something there's just something so it just it's it, for me it's a discovery part of it that i really enjoy like there's been so many moments that that me and you and and adam and chris have been on where we've just played naturally and organically discovered something probably in the wrong order but we've discovered it ourselves not knowing what we were doing stumbled on something and just been mesmerized by it but you, and you, then... you could chart it you could chart the discoveries like you know i would throw out and, and like you talk about moment of the year now moment of the year <laughs> on the podcast this year right that's not a, that's something that's not tied to a game being released that year and i would throw out jetpacks i would throw out if i say engines um, yes that's yeah. not. I mean, why am I worried about spoiling this game? <laughs> for Mick, Mick, Mick's downloaded it. We've, yeah, we've convinced and, him. But, but it's... Mick won't get to it for weeks. <laughs> no, he won't. I've seen you this, Mick. <laughs> yeah, you know. I can't. Um, but like, I could throw out the, the 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 rover. I could throw out the. Do you remember how? Do you remember? This is weeks ago now. Do you remember how desperate I was to get the biggest space shuttle? But yeah. now it's just like, why are we even? We've got our base. Um, People might have seen it in the screenshots. We've got three shuttles. There's a, a small, medium, and large. We only use the large one. Why do we not just trash those other ones and maybe get the frame rate up a bit by maybe reducing the base footprint, you know? Mm, yeah, because it probably. looks cool. It looks cool, Chris. Yeah. Our, our base looks there. cool, yeah. Actually, yeah, there's no I, negative to that. I, I, like last, I was, was it yes, yesterday in terms of record, yeah, days yeah. or whatnot, when you took me deep and... Uh, <laughs> And there was that discovery of of what's actually at the core of the planets was like I know you guys discovered that quite naturally, so it happened different for you. Whereas you got to show me it, and like it still blew me away. Like there's so many little things. Like you, you can you can have a whole session where you you spend like building up the base, collecting resources, research, and all this, and making sure that you you're getting the the next few bits that you need to go on an expedition and then you get past that and you do have other sessions where you're going into space and you're traveling and then you have like hours where you just don't really get, do anything get lost but in it, a rover trying to find well, the yeah get lost in a rover but you just like, like i just to like someone. you're naturally fit into your roles and they can change quite a bit it doesn't matter but yeah, like, you so always know what you want to do and like, i like, absolutely yesterday when we went to um the new pl the new planet i just started flattening the base because i just wanted it to all be nice and bloody so hard to do that colonizing yeah. it is especially when you catch the wrong you truck. catch a, like a slight divot in the ground yeah or some you, prick drives a truck around like smashing through rocks it up yeah yeah thanks yeah. but that. like it's, I actually think that's, that's something I meant to mention weeks ago, what you've just said there, Chris. Like, um, Again, Mick, sorry, you're not part of this little gang at the moment. You will be. You join join us, Mick. Join us. Um, but, one, but of Chris us Hyde, one of us. Chris Hyde, Hyde is the person now, I think... I <laughs> well, hey. Chris Hyde, I think you're the person I've played with most of this game. In fact, I know you are. Um, but originally, and Chris when, Chris White, when you were, we, we first discovered this together, <clears throat> yeah. I was not leaving the base. I was My role was basically... Adam stays at the base while Chris White and Adam Carroll go off exploring. Um, Chris Hyde does the resources and makes everything neat. And Adam is just here crafting, essentially. And now you can't fucking see me for dust because I'm on that rover just in the distance. 
and exploring and and like the 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 freedom i didn't have that i felt like i'm not going out there it's too easy to die run out of oxygen just way too easy to fall down a hole but then you get jetpacks and you get the car and it's like i'm invincible man i am i am the spaceman right now you earned it as well like you say you earn it you say invincible but I'm still not going to get my promotion to driver any time soon, am I? You worry me because, like Chris White, I showed the vehicle to. Like I drove, it was, it was in my head, right? Chris was there going, "Oh, what's Adam going to show me in this?" Just, vroom, and I'm like, "Hey!" <laughs> and then Chris was like, oh, oh, it's a... "That's it. That's how it was going to go down in my head." <laughs> and it kind of was similar, not quite as uh, amazing as that. Yeah. But, um, but Chris, whoever gets in the vehicle first is the driver and if say i then get out whoever got in next i guess is the driver so i got out and chris was driving and having experienced chris hyde's driving and his your fear you are afraid of that vehicle there's no two ways about it and i, I have a hundred percent failure rate with that vehicle you that's the I reason had to go rescue you i had to literally yeah. go to you and dig the and it's like chris why i was like i'm not gonna because do you know Again, everyone here is a, as, as, as a father, so there's, the, there's a feeling where sometimes you're like, you, so one of the things I don't like, for example, I'm not a very big fan of spiders, okay? But when the kid's around, it's like, eh, fucking spider, whatever, yeah, fuck, it, it's spider. But in time, I'm like, going, <laughs> <laughs> someone else do it. Claire, I'm busy. Could you, uh, I'm, it's, I, no, I would, of course I would, but I'm really busy right now. So if you could just get the glass and get that fucking spider out of this fucking cabin that's made of wood that I didn't think through at all when we had it built. <laughs> Um, but you don't want to let on because you just want people to discover things naturally. So with Chris, when he was driving and just went straight, like you know that you're driving along, there's suddenly a ravine you don't see, and he's like sh- straight down it. And in my head, I'm going, shit, shit, we've lost the <laughs> RTG generator, we've lost the everything's gone. And then I'm just like, just be quiet, just be quiet. And then Chris just worked his way out of it. It's like <clears throat> I almost felt proud. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That I ignored. <laughs> That I don't know. And like Chris, you seem to have the fear, whereas Chris White is, it's just like, I don't know, fucking whatever. I, I don't mean, care I, about this car. I don't know. I, I, I was, after that, I was scared to go back in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, don't know just, what. Just... Is, it, is it me? Are you afraid I'll shout, like, it's my fucking car? I, like, I no, was. I, I, you I was. were, actually. The, I the first tell. time, right, I, right. I didn't let on. I knew, by the way. I knew <laughs> the whole time he was trying not to tell me what he'd done. The, the first time, <laughs> the first incident, Mick, right? It was it was me, Adam, and I think Adam Carroll had been on, but I think he'd, he'd yeah. kind of AFK. He so yeah. Adam, Adam was just exploring, and I thought, I'm just going to take the car. I, I can do it. It's fine. There's nothing like to worry about. Like a teenager about. sneaking out after the parents yeah. have gone to bed. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go far. I'm just going to get some resources. I'll come back. He won't even know I'm gone. Sorted. And then I just started drilling, and we didn't have the paver at this point, so if you drill too mm. far... And you find a hole, which I did. Find a hole in the planet, fell down it, then ran out of oxygen, died underground, and then couldn't find my dead body or the car. It's still there. It's still in the middle of the planet somewhere. The car is still there. And so I spent the next 20 minutes trying not to let on that I'd lost it. it. Probably maybe even like. Yeah, maybe even the best part of an hour. And the thing is, you, you know how I knew? You just went really quiet for long periods. And I was like, something's not right here like we were just chatting and he's gone really quiet and then i look, sort of look around me and i go hmm when's he gonna own up to this mistake and um and i was like if i can get it back before he notices it's gone like you say like a naughty teenager nothing it will all be fine i know it was yeah. his pride and yeah. joy this car it, it spent ages crafting all the resources making it, it all uh, it was, and i just nicked cool it car. and binned it in the planet and we still don't know where it is. We don't. We've never got it back. No, we've got a better one since then, but it's all gone. Oh yeah, that and, wasn't and even the good one, was it? No. And then the good one, I thought right yesterday, second time, second chance. It can't happen twice. I told them both, I'm just gonna take the car. I'm not going far. I'm letting you know now. This is what's happening. It can't happen again. Within ten minutes, I was like, Adam, can you can you come and help me? I think you called me was... dad, actually. <laughs> Yeah, the car was vertical in a hole, and I was stuck, and I couldn't, I couldn't move it. And he had to come and help me get it out. Honestly, I can't drive yeah. in that game. Just stick me on resource uh, gallery, and, and that's it's... all I can do. I, I, I don't know, like, Mick, like I don't know, Mick. Are we selling this to you, or are you? <laughs> I'm, like... I'm intrigued Space by nerds. it. Yeah, because I, I it, something that wasn't on my radar at all uh, previously, because it didn't look like my sort of 
didn't look nearly violent enough to, to catch my interest. And then, no, 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 no. But then uh, when you said you, you were playing it a couple of weeks ago, and then and then you kept saying you were playing. I thought this is unusual for Adam, because usually you know you, very. It's not often that you actually get really hooked on a game outside of you know what we're doing and reviewing and things like that. And uh, yeah, so I, mm. I thought, well, it seems like it's worth. But because I just I'm always busy. I'm always playing like five things, so I just never got around to it. The other day and the rest. Well, yeah, the other day I was on and I thought, you know what? It's there. It's on Game Pass. I hit download, so I've got it. When I'll get to it, I don't know. But I do. I you have sold it to You're, me. Yeah, I'm did you download PC or Xbox? No, I downloaded with Xbox. Did you download? Uh, I I would recommend I in on, your situation to go PC because if you if you have the option to play on PC, it's on Game Pass for both. I would say if you have the yeah. option, I would strongly strongly recommend yeah. PC just mm. for the fact that once you get do. to a significant stage, the loads are mental. Uh, yeah right yeah I, I usually do but i think really, it was just because i was yeah. on i was on xbox and it was right there on game pass so i just hit download okay but i will i will well, check it out look, on PC let's... Instead, I think. fair play let's let's talk some e3 sort of because what i think people keep forgetting C3 is we keep doing all these press season, conferences it? It, it, it is and ea play has happened um, and we'll, we'll just have a quick chat about this. I, I'm not going to lie, I didn't stay up and watch it. It was midnight. I found it a little confusing when so much of EA's output is sports-related and you have your <clears> FIFAs <throat> that they would do it at such an unfriendly UK time. But, I mean, that, well, it's a global market, so I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to start with a negative. No Mass Effect. I, the, the, I mean... Saying yeah. it was heavily rumoured would be an understatement. Like there were journalists, like almost factually saying, and it will be at EA Play. So, unless yeah. Nintendo were going to do a surprise direct, and I'm pretty sure they said they won't be doing any because they can't. They Nintendo don't have the facilities to do these at the moment. No Mass Effect. No, no. Yeah, HD I was really collection disappointed by that. This yeah. is this is silly. To be honest, yeah. it's now reached a point where it's like. Why? You know, what the fuck are you playing at? This is what people have been are they clamoring afraid? for. Yeah, but are they afraid? Because think of the... I've, a lot of us said at the I time after know. Andromeda, they need to leave it alone. But it's a... Yeah, but it's I not, don't think they need... It's not a new game. A, yeah, exactly. And there's, to be honest, there's a lot of brownie points to recoup by, by yeah. sort of re-releasing yeah. the original trilogy. And, and not... I know that the third one... I didn't find the third one. I'll be dead honest with you. I loved it when I when I played it. I don't know if I reviewed it somewhere. I, I did really like the I whole trilogy it, yeah. in general. I didn't going back. I I wasn't. I'm not a massive fan of the first one anymore because the first, you know they changed a hell of a lot. In Qu- quality of life two. stuff from one to oh, two for, is, uh, is just is a hard. huge a huge goal. But uh, but I did. But I would story love to, to play one, one was with twos. Who's quality you know, of life in pretty absolutely oh and they and this is the thing right ea for all the money in the fucking world right and they could if they wanted to they could do that remaster and i don't think there's that many people that would be angry if they took what if they've crammed it full of microtransactions and a bolted on multiplayer that would piss people off but i think if they just got mass effect one and they did remaster it with the quality of life stuff from mass effect 2 i don't think people would be angry at that i wouldn't be angry at that i'd like to play that because um, the visuals, I mean, Mass Effect has always had, everyone went nuts about the visuals in Andromeda. Mass Effect has always been janky as fuck. Go back and play Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3. It, they, the, the engine always has Dragon Age. It's the same engine, is it, they use for Dragon Age as for Mass oh, Effect? It's a, it, yeah, probably. It? It's not I don't know, Andro- Andromeda would surely be on Frostbite, I would have thought. Andromeda, wouldn't it? Oh, well, yeah. But yeah, I guess so. Maybe? But then it still, it didn't look any... I'm not I, sure. I, mean, now. I, I thought know if most the of the times that line up. I thought most of Andromeda aesthetically was quite nice. I know they had problems <clears> with <throat> animation and the lip syncing and all that sort of stuff. But that was just. But I think going back and play Mass Effect One, it's lacking. I think the first game is lacking, and the third game, all that stupid controversy at the end was just silly. I thought, but Mass Effect Two. <laughs> That's all I really want. I only want the greater trilogy. I kind of just want Mass Effect Two. But the, the thing is, I remember was was Mass Effect One an exclusive at some point? Yeah, it was. It was Xbox exclusive. It was exclusive, and then when they released Mass Effect Two, that one came to PlayStation, didn't it? If I remember, but you couldn't, you wouldn't have had the choices because the choices carried over. 
one of the games they did some weird like comic style you choose and you had to answer questions yeah yeah because you couldn't just upload a a save directly to it so you do you do lose that if you play the trilogy as a whole thing but what i'd like to see is the whole thing just one great big remaster just release it in yeah whatever they do with with the third game the quality of life whatever they do do that for all three Give us the whole game, start to finish, to play through with that one character. Start to, I'm sure that's possible. I'm sure EA could. And I think EA is a company that I think always need to win back favour for something. Like, no matter what they do, they're always trying to win back favour somewhere. Every, for every Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which I know you've got your reservations about, I have my reservations about it, but it was very popular. It, was a very it wasn't bad. Game. I don't think it was bad. It didn't, it didn't do anything to really upset people. Uh, I think Apex Legends to begin with, I know it had some rocky moments, but I think Apex Legends, when they, when they launched that surprise launch of Apex Legends, that got them some brownie points. But for everything they do that's good... They do something that really upsets everybody as well, like they did with Battlefront 2. And I don't know, I think that I think the world I think the world is ready for the Mass Effect trilogy remastered. Yeah. I think it should be. It, it should have at EA play this year, they should have had that. Like forget everything. Even people are even clamoring for like Dragon Age Origins remastered and things. Really? Do yeah, I've seen that quite a lot. I've seen a lot of people saying that they'd happily play Dragon oh. Age. Did we get Dragon Age? Master. There was a lot of things going they, on about no, three they, pictures, they showed, wasn't there? Yeah, no, they uh, did they, what they did with Andromeda, didn't they? Where they said, this is what it's going to do. Next, and, but, they, they, they had a little thing where they showed their next-gen stuff, and there was... Yeah, yeah, I don't know if they see, could put ne- but Dragon Age, but like... Yeah, people, yeah, but you people, see, people, people are wary people. of that shit now because yeah. of what they did with Andromeda. I'm surprised they did this again, actually. But, you know, the lead-up to Andromeda, I mean, studios publishers uh, at a certain point this industry just doesn't fucking learn and at a certain point the people these these companies have to learn these things it's like beth Thursday did it with fallout 76 you know that uh, todd howard came on when they were announcing that and said it's going to be 16 times what 16 oh, times as beautiful as as for you know and well, wonderful, you know, that's great. And then the game comes out, and it's just a fucking three-legged donkey in a horse race, and it's just, it's not good enough, really. And I think that they did that with Andromeda. EA did a similar thing with Andromeda. They came out and said, this is what it's going to do. And everybody went, wow, because we had loved, collectively, I think the gaming community had loved the Mass Effect trilogy. It's not that many people I've spoken to say, oh, load of shit. But then Andromeda just destroyed that. And I think they could do the same with Dragon Age. I think coming out and saying this is what it's well, going to do is gonna, if they don't re-up that engine to a fucking to some degree, it's, there's well, going to be problems. And people are waiting for EA to fuck up all the time. Oh yeah. Well, to be to be fair, like I say, I started off on a negative. We can't. It's a bit unfair to have a go at them about what they didn't announce. So let's just jump on some stuff that they did announce. Um, I want to play Squadron. Let, let's start with that because <clears throat> Star Wars Squadron is. Yeah. They already announced it. Now they've shown it. Uh, I'm. <laughs> I can't do the jokes because there's a camera there. Um, I'm. I'm. A, I like Star Wars, but I'm not like the uber fan that this gentleman no, is down here. Um, Chris White is. Uh, so I can't. Let's say I can't do the jokes when there's a camera right on me. Um, Star I Wars. Was. Yeah, I mean, but Chris White, <laughs> you still are right. You're still a big Star Wars fan. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Star Wars Squadron. Um. <laughs> it look it looks incredible. Yeah. However, I, I like towards the end of last year and the start of this year, I put in about seventy hours into Battlefront Two when they released the like the wow. big collection. Mm-hmm. When they you know you could you could you have all the outfits, all the characters, everything, and I didn't play. I played about two or three hours of the space combat thing because not because I, I disliked it. I disliked the the online bits of it. I just didn't enjoy playing it online. I just find, I found I wasn't as nifty as others and it just kind of ruined the experience. So I preferred to stay on, on the ground. But I think, I, I mean, I don't know a lot about it because I haven't actually seen the new trailer. But right. is there a story to it? Is it like a single player there, as well? There, or is, there it, is, yeah. Or is it like well, Battlefront I, I... where it's 
well, this is what people it's... are saying is that like yes there's a story but there was a story to battlefront so so like battlefront 2 where there's about five hour story and then i i would that's what but yeah. that said, uh, hey it's also entirely it, available in vr it, it could be really so. cool like there's a lot of people um are... lot of stuff they haven't used in battlefront 2 in terms of like vehicles and location and stuff and it, it could be really good what was the what was the Star Wars game years ago? Was it Rogue Star Wars Squadron. Rogue, 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 Rogue Squadron? Rogue yeah. Squadron. That I remember that. I can't remember the title, but I remember the game. That's right. what I want from this. You know, I want to. I want to. I want to trip up an attack walker with my tow that's, cable um, and things. You know, that, yeah. that, that's the that's vibe what I, got I want from this. To be honest, that was that's the what game I want from a Star Wars head, game. So, I want to yeah. be whipping, you know, above the trees of Endor. I know they're going to have a new storyline. See, I don't. <clears throat> I'm not into new Star Wars, right? I don't, we're not going to get. I know we're not going to get into it because that's a whole no. other podcast. And I know Chris, <laughs> Chris is a major fan. And I'm not going to, you know, shit on that. But new Star Wars from the Force Awakened. I like Rogue One. I like the Force Awakened. From that, it, I just lost it um, to the point where I couldn't even get into the Mandalorian, which everyone really likes. And I thought that'd be fantastic, and I just couldn't. I can't do it anymore. Um, I like the older stuff. I do. I like the original trilogy. I like the stuff from the old republic you know i like i like that mm. entire canon which is now kind of the is it called um the ex, it's not even extended universe now it's uh it's Le- like legends, legends star wars legends yeah but that stuff is what i like that's the star wars i really like the darker stuff the older yeah stuff, no the i Darth agree revan and malak Darth revan. That's my, i can i can sit and watch and read and all i can just consume that star wars forever mm. so i don't know because i haven't I I'm, I'm a bit hazy on where squadron on where squadron comes in to you know because everything focuses on the fucking clone wars at the minute star wars seems to be stuck in this period it's got this fucking thousands yeah. of year history stretched yeah. out all this thousands and thousands of years of lore and it focuses on this in what 20 year period constantly so i don't know where squadron falls into that but i I'd, I'd love to see star someone do what uh, Knights of the Republic did was that Bioware? Oh, that was Bioware, course. wasn't that it? Was Bioware. Bioware, Bioware. Bioware. Yeah. That was peak Bioware. That was Bioware at the top. Absolutely. I'd love to see. That. I'd love to see people do something original with Star Wars because I don't think anyone's really done anything original with Star Wars since Knights of the Old Republic. Mm, it seems no. to be that way now. Everything is just kind of focused on this one period. So I, I kind of hope that Squadron gives us something new. But I really, I've got no problem with them pandering to the fans with this one. I've got no problem with them throwing a Hoth level in there. And a, do you know what I mean? I want that. I want to do. Yeah. I want to do. A, you got to have a trench run. You know, I want that stuff. I want a battle of Yavin. I want to see all that stuff in a in a fight in a Starfighter game with the Star yeah. Wars name on it. Just just feed the geek in me, and then I'll be. I'll be happy to be honest. I hope EA. Mm. Well, who's who's publishing? Who's developing? No, oh, yeah, yeah, it's um, uh, Motive, isn't it? Yeah, Motive. So it's an EA stu- EA yeah, owned it's, studio. It's, it's, yeah. oh, what did they do before? I can't remember. But that, that I mean, Star Wars is always a big thing. Um, we're not going to dwell on it. FIFA, Madden. Um, they they didn't show an NHL, but they said, "Don't worry about that," and which I took to mean we haven't shown it, but of course it's going to be an NHL. Yeah. Um. FIFA on Switch is going to be legacy again. I'm, there's no point moaning about it. I mean, why bother? I mean, I nearly, yeah. I thought to myself, the other day I found myself, because I've been playing so much Switch recently, I was like, you know what? I might just buy FIFA on Switch. I was like, well, I reviewed 19, and if it's just legacy, well, what's the point? So, yeah. But I'm not going to moan about it, because I, I, in this respect, I'm a consumer, and I know what it is, so why would I? I'm just, I'm just not going to buy it. Simple yeah. as that. Um, what else have we got? Apex Legends is going cross-play, which is great. It's coming to Steam, which is great. And then in holiday 2020, it's coming to Switch. Now, I will definitely try it on Switch. Absolutely, yeah. In the same way that I tried Fortnite on Switch and then went back to Xbox and PC. Um, But it's great. It's it's EA... There's one little thing that's nagging at me. EA are definitely putting their feet in the water to try and say, we're not that EA anymore. There's all these... like they've, They've brought everything to Steam. Like, Mick, you're reviewing... Uh, well, the time you read this, watch this rather, Command & Conquer Remaster review will be up, video will be up. That was reviewed on Steam. Yeah, um, we yeah. were given the option, do you want to review it on Steam or Origin? Steam, of course. Um, they are definitely doing that more. They're also bringing all their backwards, their, their historical games to Steam, which is going, apparently including Dead Space 3 is coming, and that just again mm. feels like 
prodding the bear a little bit, like, you know, yeah, that ain't the best one, but give us the rest of them. But they're bringing a lot more. They're actually bringing EA Access to Steam as well, which is the first ever subscription-based model on Steam. So there's the deal been done there. Um, again, Apex Legends, that's cool. What else have we got? We've got uh, Lost in Random. We've got Rocket Arena, which looks like basically EA's Overwatch. It was a Nexon published game, and now EA are publishing it, so they've obviously seen something in that. Yeah. Uh, and then I think the probably the we we'll get to the biggest one last. Um, the new Joseph Fares game, um, it takes two. Now, Chris, you you obviously reviewed a way out. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you caught up on that? Has anyone actually seen the trailer they reviewed released for It Takes Two? I've read the news. I haven't actually seen the trailer. Is that actually. what the game's really called? It Takes mm-hmm. Two. Yeah, it's, it's another co-op game. <laughs> I, I can get that, but is it? I mean, that sounds it's like called a, It like Takes a, Two, yeah. like a ballroom dancing sim. Or <laughs> so, something. Sounds like a. <laughs> It's like a game show, doesn't it? I, and that's an awful title for a game. I don't like the way either he is choosing to or they are choosing to market this guy rather than the games. Mm. Yeah, now, he definitely I thought that. seems like there's personality, right? It was very much evident at the Game Awards when he was like, fuck the Oscars. This trailer's two and a half minutes long. The first minute are about him. Mm-hmm. Just him showing he... And it's like... I get that there there are auteurs in the field. You you have your Kojimas, you have your Swerries, you have your um. Well, there, there were others. I'm not going to go and listen to them. Um, I think they've earned it. But whether you like Kojima or not, he's earned the yeah. auteurship. He's earned the. There's a reason you know his name, Suda right, Fifty One. There's a reason Metal you know Gear, their names. Absolutely, they have made games that have stuck with the public <laughs> in in a way that not every game does. That's why. They are like that's why Death Stranding mattered because it's the guy who did Metal Gear Solid is making something new. Fuck. Now I'm not saying Joseph Forrest can't be that, but I think he needs that game before we start marketing him ahead of the game. Uh, and uh, I remember at the yeah, time no, you're right. saying like a way out. If he had and and again, right, they showed a clip where again he's doing the acting in this game. He's doing the motion capture. <laughs> there are reasons that there are professionals that do voiceover uh there are a reason that there are professionals who are actors who like like for the last of us example the people who make sometimes they do both but other times you will get like for example there's a character dina who i believe they use two different facial captures one of them you can see still the bone structure that's how good this is but she's not the voice actor um there are reasons there are professionals at each of those things I, i'm already looking at this and i'm already feeling a bit put off not because the game looks beautiful and like mm. oh yeah this looks right up my street but don't market a man at me when it's the game I'm gonna play. It's like a Tarantino film, isn't it? He always turns up in it. But again, oh, yeah. he earned I that. He he. I know that. that's my point now. You know, because you look, you know, you wait when you watch the Tarantino film. You wait for the Tarantino you, yeah. cameo, and then he yeah. comes in and he does his thing, and he's it's, not in it for long. He doesn't. Not, he, st- he always takes the scene a little bit, it's, and he it's might a not Stan be the Lee best. Cameo. Mm. Yeah, it's the Stan Lee thing, isn't it? He doesn't need to be the best actor because, like you say, he's earned it. Yeah. This fella's done one game, two games technically, but yeah. okay. Well, but you know, a way out fairly well received in general. I don't think it was. I, think. I don't right. think it was, it was all right. Yeah, yeah it didn't blow it's, it's anything out of the water, did it? It wasn't. It didn't get game a year and that's the what year I'm saying. Anywhere. You know, it, it wasn't. You know, it might no. have won awards. I don't know where all these awards come also, from. You see games that go winner of 50, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah you I know, don't probably know. got a shitload of laureates from somewhere, but, you know. But it, it I, I actually have a deeper problem with. with this one. So, Chris Hyde, I, I'm look, but judging by what you, the way you were reacting, you've seen the, the trailer for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I watched it last night. Um, okay. Yeah, I, was, I felt like I learned more about him than I did about the game. Right. I was like, oh, but, okay, grew up in Beirut or something. I was Beirut, like, okay, yeah. fine. That, was, cool story. But... Yeah, yeah, but I, yeah, kind of, I got the same vibe as you. I was like, okay, I, I feel like yeah. if you have to explain to me who this person is, then he, right. you shouldn't be leading with him. Which but I've, I guess I've is got the point. like, I've got like a deeper problem with this. So the, the, for those who don't know, listening, and for the, for I think obviously Mick and Chris, you haven't caught up on it yet. Um, this game is about a, I think it was a little girl, wasn't it? I think, um, whose parents are going through a divorce, and she doesn't want them to get divorced, so she makes mummy and daddy models, and they come to life. And the way he's talking, it's like, yeah, and, and fucking, and fuck this, and fuck It's like, dude, the subject matter of this game doesn't... There's a massive dissonance here between mm. the subject matter of your game, presumably, and the way you're talking and delivering your messages, this hip, cool director who's like, yeah, fuck the Oscar. Like, 
I felt like a massive disconnect. I was like, dude, I'm, I mean, your game, your rules, I guess, but I'm the message I'm getting here is that the subject matter is really not important. And mm, I don't know if that was just me, Chris. No, 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 I got the same. It, 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 I guess he was trying to show passion for it. Mm. But it, it, I guess, like you say, it was more like the but, way but then in speak which passionately. Was speak yeah, passionately exactly. Passionately in an intense way, like, but, and, and he is intense, definitely. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm game, not the game the doesn't. Game. I mean, I don't know what the. I don't know a lot about the game. It's but a platform. I can isn't understand a word some sort of platform game. Yeah, no. But I guess intensity isn't a word I'd use to describe how it make me feel. And mm. like he was, it was very full on. And it's like, it's, I, I agree with you completely. I felt like because he's an intense character, that's what took over. And yet the subject matter yeah. of the game and the way in which it'll make you feel and the reason you should be excited about it is not. Because it's going to be intense, you know, it's not going to be a thrill yeah. ride. He and I think he could have got away too. with that. He could have got away with that in a way out when that was killed. Out. He could yeah. have come on and said, you know, the guys in fucking prison and blah, and it would have been would have worked. But this is a bit, yeah. Like I said, though, it's a bit Cliffy. It reminds me of Cliffy B. Remember how big Cliffy B suddenly like everyone just knew the guy's name. But again, kind sort of, of kind of had the pedigree in terms he did, of that he yeah. earned it through Unreal, he through did, Gears. He did earn it. But then it kind of just went, but, yeah, and, no, it did. and it, everything sort of backfired. In a, I, you know, I feel for the guy to be honest sometimes. But um, yeah, he gets an yeah, awful I lot think of you've shit. Got to, you, you've got to earn that. You've got to earn that. Mm. Otherwise, you just otherwise it's just it's just so, hot air, really. At, at risk of literally, I don't I don't think we mean to sound negative. I just think there's some very odd the way they, pre- they presented their stuff has been odd. But the uh, of course the biggest thing, the biggest news is Chris White. Skates back, yeah. Sure is, sure is. I, I, I think that's <laughs> something yeah. we've all been, you know, when, whenever we feel like doing a games that should have a remaster or games that should have a sequel lists or whatnot, that's always pops up. I know it is just for me. Most of you guys and Gary's obviously, yeah. I haven't spoke to him. I'm assuming he's quite positive about this one. Nope. Um, but <laughs> nope. no, no, I'm, I'm genuine. He's not. Um, and I, I Gary, say... look, what? mate, sort it out. <laughs> All right, I'm looking directly at the camera now. You need to just cheer up about video games. But but also, he has got a point. Like he would have been excited about it a year ago. Like we've got Session now, we've got Skatebird. There are skate. Yeah, but it's, we've got Tony Hawk. Yeah, it's Tony skate, Hawks, isn't it? Yeah, it's skate, isn't it? I mean, I, I can't wait for Tony Hawks. Most of us can't wait for oh, Tony yeah. Hawks. But Skate is was fa- well, it was fantastic, and the fact that they're making ah. another one in today's day and age. It's exciting. It's really weird. Right? They actually said you willed it into existence, essentially. Like they said, the fans yeah. willed it well, again. Yeah. But so every I, every I, time there's an EA it's play. It's just started. It. It's just started the development. Yeah. So this is a year away, at least. That's fine. We've got Tony. Okay. As, okay. as someone that was... As someone that's... Like, I'm just going to say it. Like I don't have the passion for, for skate. I, I had Tony Hawk's and that was kind of it for me. Um, like they announced, obviously, I know the passion of, from you guys with skate. It's like comes up every year, I think. When we, no, I, I'm we Tony Hawk. Still I'm play skate Hawk three now. Oh. Yeah. Um, so I thought of you guys when they announced it. And I was like, Are you literally just announcing? You're saying it. You're, you're yes. doing it. That's all you're doing is just saying that it's we're gonna make it at some point. And I was like, Okay. Anything else? No. Just you're gonna make it. Okay. And that's how I, I felt a bit like I know that's supposed to be the biggest thing, but I kind of I was like, but I don't have the passion for it. So I guess if you know. I got hyped when Metroid Prime 4's just a four came up, so I, I get it. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I was like, "Oh, that that that's it." So I yeah. wonder if they would have announced it if we hadn't heard that there was the, re- the Tony Hawk's remaster. Yeah, you think they pushed it? They pushed it. I think they did a bit Very because point, yeah. there's nothing to show. Like EA Play no, next literally. year, there'll be game to play. Uh, there'll be gameplay to show. This year, yeah. I don't think they'd have bothered. I think, but with Tony Hawk's coming in, and because as soon as I mean, I you know I'm on Twitter quite a lot. As soon as Tony Hawk's the Tony Hawk's remaster was announced, I mean the comments on that were "Where the fuck is Skate?" and it had nothing to do with Tony Hawk, you know. But the fans of Skate were saying, "Well, if they can do Tony Hawk's, why we're we not getting Skate? Why why we got you know?" And that I think they've gone. You know what? If we wait till next year to show this after Tony Hawk's is out, because you know as soon as Tony that remaster will be out, they could out, see it gets a crap reception and cancel it. Yeah, you mm. know, so I don't I know. Worry. I think I, I think they, <laughs> no, they, they, they won't. Breaking no, Chris's heart there. <laughs> no, they won't. But I do it. think I do think they they jumped the gun because 
you know, of the excitement around the buzz around that Tony Hawk's remaster, I think they've gone. Because, you know, it's in this day and age, that's kind of a dangerous thing to say, we are going to make this game. We haven't started yet, but we're going to do it. You know, it's like... What well, they did happen? this before. They literally did this before. Oh, really? Look, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, 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 they did it. Yeah. I mean, God, ago, I hope it does. Some I, like I said, I still play... I still play Skate Three a little bit because I've got it. And my daughter plays it on on Xbox. Yeah. She got it. It's on the backwards compatibility. And so I still I play it now and then. I was more of a Tony Hawk's fan. Tony Hawk's Three was was, was yeah. one of my favourite game for quite a while. Uh, I played nothing but. Um, but I am looking forward to Skate Four. Um, so yeah, yeah. I hope I hope they I hope they go through with it. I hope <laughs> they do it and it and it and it's well received. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, Nintendo are probably going to do something this month, and then it's Ubisoft at the end of the month, I want to say, I think. can't remember now. now but they do Ubisoft got a shitload of stuff to catch up on? Because they caught... Well, after... after uh, what was it? I don't know what it was called now, and I reviewed it. What was the Ghost Recon... Wildlands. Break, no, uh, no. No. Breakpoint. Breakpoint. Breakpoint, right? After that, which I didn't I didn't hate. I got a lot more hate than I think it deserved. That game mm. it wasn't that bad compared to... Uh, a lot of stuff that other companies have done, even compared to stuff that Ubisoft have done. I don't think Breakpoint was that bad. It had its moments, but it, I liked it. But th- didn't they like pull everything at that point? Didn't they, they just sort of say... They sort of put stuff on hold, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They said, you know, actually stuff that was going to be out. And I think, I hope Ubisoft... I always used to say that Ubisoft... I know it might have changed a bit now, but I always used to say with the Assassin's Creed iterations, I know that they got a bit tiresome, I guess, after a while, but yeah. at a certain point in, in the past, Ubisoft were a company that used to listen and learn, I thought. Because I remember when Assassin's Creed came out and the jump from Assassin's Creed to Assassin's Creed 2, in that short development time, if you remember, there was like a year between those games, but the, yeah. the quality hike was massive. And they kept doing, they kept listening. And even the ones that weren't great, like Assassin's Creed 3, some people don't like, they always iterate on stuff. They're always, Ubisoft are always quite good, I think, at adding new stuff to games. Like they keep their uh, tent poles, you know, they keep their radio towers and their big maps and all that stuff. But they do add stuff every game. And I thought they did that with Breakpoint. And I think they, the, the, the reason they sort of delayed everything, I think, was I hope that they listened to the complaints because the cash shop in that game was a disgrace, uh, frankly. And I I think they had this business model that they thought, if this works with Breakpoint, we're just going to push it on every title going forward. And it didn't. So I hope, I hope they've learned from that. Sorry, I hijacked you there completely to have a run about Ubisoft. No, no, (laughs) we'll we'll find out very soon about Ubisoft because I believe it's the end of the month. Uh, Ubisoft Forward, that's called. We'll have a chat about that at the time. Mm. But other than that, that is a podcast for this week. Thank you uh, very much for all of you for listening. Well, you can go to patreon.com slash God is a geek. And if you do dig this podcast, and I said dig and I mean dig, if you really like this podcast, you can go there and you'll be able to get it in audio and video form early. We actually do some like a, a sort of bonus episode video wise. that's like a little bit of outtakes where we're chatting before and after the pod before we hit record. Although we have hit record. That's how it was recorded. Um, we also do a, a podcast called Fork Off, which is about food, where we rank foods. Um, Christopher White down there. He's in that as well as Nicola Ardron and Adam Carroll, who I'm sure will be back next week. And we are working on getting Nicola Ardron on camera too, so we will have the whole team on the podcast at some point, I'm sure, if not before Game of the Year at least. Thank you very much for you guys for being here, Chris, Chris, and, of course, Nicholas Fraser. Thank you for being here, Nick. <laughs> um, appreciate it. Thanks for um, having me. We hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you did, give us a rating on iTunes or whichever. I mean, what are people even use for podcasts now? St- Stitcher, Spotify we're on the lot do it there or just if you know yeah yeah. or just give us a thumbs up on youtube subscribe that's the thing we find a lot of people in the stats that are actually watching the content but don't hit the subscribe button and if you're watching this hit the subscribe button you would not believe how much that helps the visibility for other people to find our content don't just think well they pop up in our feed actually hit the subscribe button really appreciate it everyone else you know thanks guys for being here and we will speak to you next week or whenever you choose to listen Wave at the cameras, boys, and say goodbye to the microphones. That's how this stuff works. Bye, goodbye, everyone. microphone. Bye, microphone. Hey. <laughs>